welcome everybody. Um, 6.15 or pretty close to, and at this time we'll ask if anyone has any additions to the posted agenda yet. Yep. Uh, my name is Carl Grappi. I'm uh, on the Rochester Stockbridge School Board. I wanted to uh, discuss the uh, update the board, uh, select board on the state of the uh, education tax um, numbers and uh, discuss uh, late fees. Okay. All right. And. I wanted to resolve a water bill. Mm-hmm. What was it? I'd like to resolve my water bill. Ah, okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anybody else? Nope. So uh, <coughs> then we'll start off and verify that this um, meeting has been posted in three public places, right, and on the website. Okay. And email to interested parties so we're uh, warned and can go ahead and have this meeting legally so we'll start off with the minutes from the last select board meeting of July 22nd as printed up and I'd move to accept these as recorded I will second that all in favor aye aye, aye. all right and then we also have minutes from the special select board meeting of July 19th, and that was in um, regarding the line of credit going into with Mascoma Bank um, to deal with the grant anticipation borrowing for the Bethel Mountain Road project. And I'd vote to accept these minutes as typed up. Well, second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. And one more small set of minutes also on July 19th and that was meeting with Dubois and <coughs> King to open the bids for the Bethel Mountain Road project which we did and we awarded to GW Tatro Construction for two million two hundred seventy three thousand one hundred and eighty eight dollars and um, and off they go there's a couple smaller ones that uh, well that's who we awarded it to and we had three bids that was the um, the lowest and I don't know if we need to it's all in the minutes what the other bids were but that was the lowest one we got. I'd move to accept those I second that all in favor Aye. 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 all right and <clears throat> we've got um, the and I guess we'll um, we've got those well, why don't we start with um, Carl? You came the farthest, and, um, and um, um, so I'm sure everyone's uh, aware that uh, we set a tax rate uh, based on normal practice, which is we get a, an enrollment count from the state around the, the beginning of the year. We use that to build out a budget, uh, which we did, and uh, people people passed. The budget had uh, just under a three percent uh, tax increase in it. Uh, towards the end of May, the Agency of, of, of Education changed the number of enrollment, reducing, uh, basically reducing our student count by about 5%, which added uh, close to a quarter million dollars of, uh, of, of additional money that needed to be raised because you raise money based on the number of kids. Uh, the more kids the, to, to spread the dollars over, the uh, uh, less the money is. Uh, they reduced the number from uh, just under 180, 179.8 to 170.3. Uh, that added the, the money that I spoke of as well as pushed the town uh, uh, education rate into the penalty. Uh, we have uh, appealed that. We've gone through and we've uh, uh, we had people from uh, both uh, Rochester and Stockbridge going over all the uh, uh, census years, the student enrollments for the last uh, three years for both schools, uh, and we, we've challenged the number. They found some more uh, students. They say that they, 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 they agreed that these students were dropped off, some students were dropped off the rolls. They won't have an accurate count, they expect, till the end of the month. Uh, we've talked to our legislature. Sandy Haas has been uh, incredibly helpful, as is Dick McCormick. Um, and what the uh, Secretary of Education has said, he very much wants to see the, uh, uh, the accurate tally done, and uh, there's hope in the, in the Agency of Education that that will put things back to just about where we were, uh, if not maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse, but in that you know, spin range of that original number, in which case uh, we would just uh, readjust the bills, 
uh, the Secretary of Education has indicated that should uh, the number end up short, uh, given that the, the, the uh, uh, information was by law supposed to be given to us, as I mentioned at the beginning of the year, and changing it uh, nigh upon uh, uh, the beginning of June really isn't the most uh, kosher of moves. Uh, there's some there's some ways the secretary is looking at being able to move the rate and hold the taxpayers harmless uh, for that. But we'll know more about that at the end of the month. He's not willing to really discuss that until he really knows that the number that the state provided was was actually pretty far off. Um, in Stockbridge, uh, we have the same tax payment schedule that uh, you guys do, August 15th, uh, November 15th. Or no, you're. No. you're yeah. We're, we're, we both have a first payment of August 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Stockbridge, our second payment is in November, and it's always been town policy not to assess a late fee uh, until monies uh, are delayed past uh, uh, that November payment. So in Stockbridge, the, the, the feeling is that if people wait, uh, we either pay, some people have said they want to pay based on what they could pay last year. Other people uh, will just pay the first half of their bill because they can afford it. Um, and then settle up on the on the back end if, if the, the, the amount is reduced. Uh, there was there was uh, uh, some people told me that in Rochester in general the, the policy is to uh, charge a late fee on that first half uh, uh, of tax payment if it's not received by uh, August 15th. And it'd be I think it might be might be a good thing to, to, to push that back a bit. But I don't know what I don't the, think we do charge a late fee. Interest. In, we charge interest, well, we but no late fee before. until it's the the final fourth wow. payment is okay. is overdue. So it, yeah, it, you know I, I'm not sure uh, what the AOE uh, told us to do or told the, the school board to do last week was to come to the next select board meeting mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, raise the question with you. Uh, it's not our we don't have a, the, the, the authority to, uh, to, to, to impose or, or suspend interest or late fees. Right. It's not the, it's, it's the power right. of the select right. board. So I don't know what, what you guys want to do about it for, for uh, your community. Well, there's no, there would be no late fee related to this first payment and ostensibly the the um, billing will be straightened out by the time the next bill cycle yeah. the next cycle comes by so this this payment would be inflated by a quarter of the mistaken amount yeah basically which is is something but uh, i mean it's i don't know what are your thoughts on it but, no, I don't think a fee should be. Oh, well, yeah, we don't have a fee. I guess the question is, would we um, suspend interest? But actually, the the lion's share of the tax payment would be legitimate tax bills. So I don't, you know, I I don't know if it's um, I, I, I there's no real penalty involved coming up yet. So I think it'd probably be cleanest just to leave it how it is, and then if people pay a tad more now, then they're gonna have to pay a little bit less in the next payment right. or subsequent payment. Yeah. I mean, it's um, um, yeah, there's some people in, in stockers that, that often have paid the, the, the bulk of their bill in, in, in November mm -hmm. because they haven't you know, yeah. they haven't uh, uh, resolved the harvest season and everything else. Um, so, okay. That's, uh, no, thanks for the information. I guess I'm just curious. That, Oh, well, why did they change the count of students? Yeah, if you guys presented yeah. them with that information, yeah. where did they come about to change that? Right. They um, so the state is is, is changing to a, a a whole new a student longitudinal data system, and this this so they're moving into a different database, and it changes I guess how that number is 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 calculated and assessed because it's not just a straight head count per se. They it, it, you, you, like a, a high school student counts as 1.13 of an elementary student because they're, they're, they're harder to educate. Uh, if, you, if you qualify for free and reduced lunch, there's a yeah. poverty adjustment to, 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 to help uh, a, a, a schools that have mm -hmm. a large collection of, of, of those students. We really don't have any English second language learners, but there's another adjustment for that. Preschool kids count as like 0.6. So in, in so the, it, it's that that database that takes all the different attendance information yeah. and, and, and and calculates that number and then apportions out like the tuition students that are you know the the, the kids that from Rochester that go to Middlebury mm -hmm. or, or go to Sheridan Academy need right. to be credited to Rochester and not counted 
for Middlebury's counter or the Sharon Academy's mm -hmm. counter. So mm -hmm. the system, I guess, is complicated to try to bring that information together, and it's just not the, the transition going poorly. And you know, the, the agency is lost a quarter of their personnel. They were telling us uh, in the last in the last few years uh, uh, since the uh, 2008. Um, Big, big recession and government layoff. They've, they've just been dropping personnel. So apparently, part of the reason, for example, that it's 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 going to be late to the end of the month is the people that are the, the 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 guy that really does this job is 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 away. I mean, it's taken them so long to do this because they've had to have training on the new system to understand how the new system is is incorrect and it's. Martha. Oh, I just have a question for Carl. So. Um, I'm not going to have a lot of space to do <laughs> because there's so many people here tonight. So, kind of a, in a nutshell, basically, am I correct in saying that um, you've appealed you appealed the agency of education's original um, decision, and now they uh, they got they've made another count and discovered that there are actually more children in our district or more students. They gave they gave us lists of, of, of students by name for each of the last three years for Rochester and for Stockbridge. Uh -huh. And we've been going through and confirming who those students are, what students may be missing, um, uh, and submitted that information back to them out of those six. So um, enrollment's a, ro a two year rolling average, so, out of those, so for to do the last two years of enrollment requires the last three years of student counts. Right. They gave us all the names. We've, we've gone through and corrected it and given it back to them. They've looked at one of those six censuses, and in that census, they found they they, they found uh, uh, like a shift of like four in our direction. They assume they they they, they figure that they're going to find similar information on the other ones, which is why they say they like to wait uh, before it. But they've appealed, and we've appealed, and they've given us indications that they that they understand their number is incorrect. Okay, so they basically it. feel that their their number of students will go up, so the amount you be assessed would go down. Right. We or or would be back to the number they gave us. You know, we we get back to the number. The one that we all voted on. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. All right. So that and that would would be reflected in our tax bills if that's true. That um, they'd be lower than the ones we just got. Correct. Right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Marvin, you had a question. Out of the. Uh, 10 or 12 schools in this supervisory union, why is Rochester and Stockbridge always the fall guy? I wonder that myself a lot. Thank you. Um, Ask the superintendent that. Yes, the superintendent, uh, we, we have had some fairly uh, strong conversations uh, uh, with the central office about um, the communication, uh, getting, getting to us in a timely, timely uh, manner. Um, you know, if, if we had known sooner, we could have, for example, uh, come to the select board and said, maybe we want to hold off on the tax bills. But instead of the, the, the problem being revealed to us when the tax bills were mailed out, and actually the Stockbridge clerk called one of the Stockbridge board members and said, this isn't the number we voted on. So there wasn't communi there, there, there was not good communication from the central office to the school board to, 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 to give us time to, to let people know what's going on. Which no really affects schools. our credibility. No other schools in this district have had this problem. No, there's been uh, some problems in uh, uh, one of the school districts around Rutland has had a similar has had a similar problem, and I want to say somewhere down in Wyndham that they've they've had. We've been reaching out to other districts to find out how big the, the, the problem is and whether other districts have had it. And there's been a few. But but Carl, is it with? Uh, students who are being tuitioned or elementary students? It's mostly the students who are being tuitioned. Yeah, sure. um, part of the, the, the thing that I think confused the agency, a lot of the names that we saw that were missing were the last year that Rochester operated as a high school, the yeah. school board tuitioned out those kids that, that, that already wanted to go somewhere else for that last year. They think some of those names were a lot of the, 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 the kids that got dropped. So, you know, because, uh, you know, the, uh, Technically, they, they, they may not have been trying to capture those kids because technically Rochester was operating a high school. So mm -hmm. that's the you know that's at least what they're working on. They haven't been able to give us a good explanation of, of, of why, other than new database, you know, don't understand uh, uh, where this came from. Mm -hmm. So are you getting part-time employment with the? Uh 
<laughs> no, I, I well, I, I got to come to a Rochester Select Board meeting, so it's that. Yeah. <laughs> you got to sit by the door, too. Well, I, the, the alternative is that people show up at my house with pitches and tor uh, torches and pitchforks wondering why their tax bill is so much higher than what they voted on. So it's, it's important that, to, that someone has to clean up the mess. We'll Thank go around you. and tell people what's going on there. Yeah, well, appreciate you coming. and. And um, thank you for letting me take up your time. Oh yeah, well, go take up some more time at the supervisory union for us. <laughs> yeah. I shall. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks for explaining. Well, while we're um, talking about um, odd bills, Mary Beth, you want to talk about your water bill? What's going on with that? Sure, I'll try to summarize it, and then the clerk has a packet of all the letters I've sent and my old bills. Mm -hmm. I, roughly a year ago, I got a water bill that was hundreds of dollars more than it should have been mm -hmm. based on past usage. So I came over and said, any clue what this could be and what I can do? And they said, call Terry Severy. So I did. Um, and I don't remember everything Terry did. I think you came and read the meter a few times and tried to figure it out. And he, at the same time, also talked to my housemate, Jerry, when I wasn't there one day and said, I think you asked him if the toilet was overrunning. Right. And Jerry said no, because uh, he un interpreted that as is your toilet running, like you can hear water <coughs> running. And mm -hmm. as soon as we got the bill, we had already gone around the house and looked for leaks and yeah. for water things. So I have forgotten how many letters and how many bills later. But uh, it eventually turned out that Terry came back when I was there, and he said, any chance your toilet is overrunning? And I said, do you want to come look? And he said, sure. And it turned out what he was talking about and what we were answering no to were two different questions. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that if you take the top off the tank of the toilet and the water level is even with the pipe that the water would go down or into, mm -hmm. it overruns that pipe and causes it to run all the time. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem. Yeah. So, so it wasn't to the point where you could hear it. But it right. was there's also there's a, a yeah. float misadjustment or something like it that. It had to really be yeah. running a lot for you to hear. Sure. Yeah. And, and so it had caused hundreds of dollars worth of mm -hmm. water loss. Um, and having a hard time coming up with hundreds of dollars extra, I just talked to Terry and said, what do I do? And he said, well, talk to the board. Just explain there was a learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't be charged any interest while this is being worked out. Yeah. And so I've sent several letters and just not heard from anybody. And I, I, in one of the letters, I said, how about if I pay an average amount for this month? And I sent that check along. Mm -hmm. And in another one of the letters, I said, how about if I write an educational brochure for you and send, you can send it out to taxpayers so that they don't get in the same position? <laughs> right. And I've just not heard from anyone. And I just want to get it resolved, looking for some relief on that. Yeah. Well, usually well, in the, what were you going to say? Tom? I was going to say, what? How much over is is the bills been percentage wise? I don't know the percentage wise, but there's four hundred dollars was the excess amount that I've ever written. And it normally is. So about a four times increase. Yeah. And we we got yeah, a couple of checks. It's no longer happening. Terry, do you have any other comment on this? I mean, I don't think it wasn't the water meter. They were actually using the water. So right. We've had, you know, she's not the first one. Uh, in the past, I mean, 90% of the time, that's what I find. We've had this issue with uh, someone else in, in the village. Yeah, several. Mm -hmm. But and I mean, we caught it, and I don't know of any that's. I got relief. Yeah. What did we do for the? He did dolls I, with it. We split the difference. Yeah, I think, think there's been a couple Mendels. that were really, yeah. really bad. Right. I think that, that hmm. what we've done in the past is okay. to kind of split the difference on the yeah. bill. You yeah. Know, so not just um, give it all to you, but, but you know, meet you, you, have, so we meet you halfway. Yeah. 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 We, I think we had discussed, you know, the owner needs to take some responsibility for maintenance, and we 
also would compromise as well, and like Dune just said, yeah. meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, st yeah. I still yeah. am willing to put together an educational page that could go out with water bills that maybe could prevent some miles from being mm -hmm. You can cut the bill in half. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, so does that sound good to you? Yeah. We split it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Go home and have a glass of water. <laughs> Dinner. Dinner. Yeah. Um, we want, um, well, I guess a lot of people are probably interested to hear about um, the project progress on Bethel Mountain Road. Joan, do you want to got any updates for us or what's what's on yeah, your we'll what's on your plate? Some quick updates on Bethel Mountain Road. Maybe um, Pat wants to do some of that as well. She's been pretty much on, on the spot with that. So I'll give you sort of the administrative side of things. All right. Um, we have four uh, right-of-way easements that we've been working on where, because these are uh, properties where um, the project will be working outside of the town right-of-way. And so we need uh, permission from the landowners to allow us to either do temporary work there or uh, in some cases, most cases, to um, install permanent structures, drainage structures that would remain in place and be maintained by the town. Um, going forward and so for that we need um, easement from these folks and so that negotiation has been going on with four landowners um, one landowner has signed uh, another landowner is has four signatures and three of them have been signed and the fourth one is going to be happening next week so those will be in place two others um, uh, are in discussion phase still sort of discovery on, on their part they're both um, absentee owners um, so they live in Massachusetts and Connecticut and so are not sort of on the spot and knowing, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis of what's happening and what happened to Bethel Mountain Road. And also there's been some revisions that need to be made to their right-of-way plans due to um, some s survey work that was done that realized that a property boundary was in the wrong place and therefore some of the work that was done was actually on the adjoining property instead of on theirs. And then in addition, there are some revisions being made to the plan to make um, sort of field conditions discovered while the work is going on, which made the, design, the engineers uh, realize that there was probably a better <coughs> way to install one of the structures. So there are some yeah. um, changes going on before mm -hmm. those are ready to be uh, signed, but we hope they will be shortly. Pat's been working with one of the landowners, and I've been working with the other one. Um, Meanwhile, work has been underway uh, since last week, um, clearing of all the um, trees and, and vegetation is pretty much finished and they just started chipping all that today. Uh, that's going to go on for another couple of days before that's over. And meanwhile, some of the drainage structures, they've started to work already um, on the slopes um, uh, with a lot of equipment and machinery. They're purchasing the rock from <coughs> Quarry and Quarry Hill, so they're probably seeing a lot of trucks going through town, um, moving pretty much in a clockwise um, situation to try and keep traffic off, you know, not all in one road at the same time. So loaded trucks will start at the Quarry, go up North Hollow Road, um, and come down Bethel, to Bethel Mountain Road from the top. And then the empty trucks, the most part, are coming from the bottom and going through the village <coughs> and back up to Quarry Hill for, to load up the empty trucks there. Is there anything you want to add to any of that? I think you've got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we now do have a signed grant agreement with the state. Um, the amount of the grant is two, $2,379,969. And that's just for the lower part, what we're calling Site 1. Um, there still has to be uh, an agreement reached on how much work is going to be done at Site 2, which is the upper part of Bethel Mountain Road, um, above the barriers um, through the intersection and up to almost to the, uh, to the town line of Bethel. Um, that's supposed to be happening this week, and there was some back and forth about whether um, 
uh, who was going to be doing all the preparation work, the design work, and the cost estimating, the bidding, and all that stuff, like it was done for site one. At first, it was going to be Du Bois and King. Um, and then uh, VTrans decided that it made more sense for the district four folks to be doing that. So that's where that stands at the moment. And so they have to come back another time and take a look at the extent of the work, come up with an estimate of the cost. Um, what they will probably be doing is instead, originally we thought we would do all the work that's required there on a permanent basis, meaning uh, stone line ditching and uh, shoulder work, paving, and there's some new culverts that need to go under the road, and then the headers and the out inlets and outlets for those, for those culverts, as well as some repairs, I think, to existing culverts. And based on a, a last conversation I had with Chris Baum from District 4, he feels that it's going to add up to too much money, um, given the amount of money we're already getting for Site 1. Um, he wants to try and limit the amount that we're asking to add to the grant for uh, Site 2. Because it would all be a little bit Sorry. Um, so it would be too much um, grant to expect to get from the Federal Highway Administration to do all of the work that's required on Site 2. So what he's going to be proposing, and this still isn't finalized, but what he's going to be proposing is to do the work that's really needed to button things up for the winter, which would be stone line ditching and uh, the shoulder work and some paving, and leave the culvert work, the additional culvert work, for a grant that we could apply to the state um, next year. Mm -hmm. um, so he's trying to keep the number down. To, uh, du Bois and King had estimated a really high number for doing all of the work. It was something like $900,000 which sounded like an awful lot to Chris and sounds like an awful lot to us as well. So that was part of the reason why I think it was handed back over to um, P. Towns to try and come up with a better number that seemed to make more sense, would be more acceptable, and therefore more likely to be funded. Um, so I think that's all I really need to discuss on Bethlehem Mountain Road. Um, FEMA, we have 24 sites and uh, sort of a team of uh, Julie, myself, and Cooter have been working with the FEMA folks. We've had one phone call with them so far uh, where we've gone and we've started to populate a spreadsheet which uh, gives a great deal of information on all the different sites, what the status is, how much money has been spent on them so far, how much of that is emergency work, how much of it is going to be permanent work still to be done um, over the next could be a couple of years. Um, and uh, we're calculating the amount of labor that's gone into it so far, as well as the contracts, materials, et cetera. And they're coming back tomorrow to go through the spreadsheet with us. And there'll probably be a lot of questions back and forth. So about the channel someone from FEMA? Sorry to interrupt. Two, two people from FEMA coming okay. tomorrow. Yes, yeah, right. And um, after that, uh, I don't know exactly what happens, but I think after that they start going out with Cooter and actually looking at each one of these individual sites and figuring out which ones. Uh, well, I think they all qualify for assistance. The question will be the extent of the repairs that they will pay for and um, how long that will take. So that's where things stand with FEMA. Um, the only other thing I think I need to mention tonight is uh, bingo road repairs. Uh, Cooter and I met with the uh, Forest Service week before last, and uh, they agreed pretty much that it made sense to do a temporary relocation of the road around uh, the area that's um, sliding into the brook, uh, moving it just maybe about 15 or 20 feet off of where it is now. And then um, on a longer term basis, a more permanent basis, we make a, a larger detour to take the road further away from where the, the stream basically wants to move in this direction. And so the, route, the road has to move further away in that same direction so that we don't continue to have um, a problem there going into the future. Um, we thought we might qualify for a VTrans emergency grant for that temporary repair which Cooter is estimated to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $21,000, but we don't. It's actually because there's, it's, we're asking for too little money. Um, the way they explained it is that if you take the, <clears throat> the non-winter budget that we did on our financial plan that we submit every year, it has to be more than 10% of that budget. 
in order to qualify because the 10% represents the amount that the town would be paying anyway because of an emergency grant. Typically the state pays 90% and the town comes up with 10%. And since the, our $21,000 didn't meet the 10% threshold, we don't qualify for a grant. Um, so that just will have to be... How far off is it? Uh, about eight or nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So when we do the wider, more permanent detour, that will that would be more that than ten percent. Well, that won't be an emergency grant at that point. Uh, um, so I broached the idea with the Forest Service of when it comes time for us to do this more permanent relocation, which could be several years, because the idea is with the temporary is it'll be a fix that'll last for maybe as long as five years, depending on what the river does yeah. in that place. And that'll give us the time to figure out, get the plans done, because it's going to be you know much more of an engineering design work than it is for a temporary. And maybe the Fire Service guys, you know, at least the ones we talked to on the ground, say makes a lot of sense, um, but they couldn't really give us a firm answer at this point, and maybe things will be different by the time we're ready to actually do it. So um, I've already submitted a special use permit to do the temporary work. Uh, Cricket, when she finds some time within the next couple of weeks, will be doing some very simple drawings. That's all we have to do, submit, and then we'll be ready to go on that. And then the question will be, Cooter will have to decide, what, just give me a sec, um, Cooter will have to decide whether he wants the town crew to do the work or whether it's gonna make more sense to contract it out. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna add anything to that? No, you did a good job. <laughs> Martha, you had a question? I, I, I can never type quite as fast as some people talk, I'm sorry. Okay. Right. And I just want to make sure to summarize this, that uh, I'm a little confused here. Uh, regarding bingo road repairs, you and John have met with the Forest Service, and everyone agreed that a detour on bingo road made sense? It's basically a relocation of a section of the road. Okay, a relocation of a section of the road made sense when repairs are being done or when that would be the repair no. is to take oh take the road farther away from the road they're, they're going to let the stream do what it wants to do so we're, we're okay so a relocation of the section of the road to make it further away from the brook made sense right and then okay. the road the current road bed would be restored meaning be replanted and reforested so that's thank you good. Thank you. Okay. Yes? I have one quick question. Uh, yes. I'm on the current cost of Terry Secondary. Yeah. Uh, on the upper part of Bethlehem Mountain Road, and I was waiting to go into my driveway when somebody comes flying around the curve and had to stop because they didn't want to go through the holes in front of our driveway. Is there a possibility that there might be a sign on the other side of the curve that says danger ahead or something? Because it's an accident to uh, waiting to happen. You're familiar with where she's talking about, right? No. No, not really. No. Well, there's a, hey. the upper mountain. It's the always road. been a curve there. Isn't yeah. There's yeah. a curve. Yeah. And across from uh, Terry Savory and our driveway, there's a huge kind of a lot of hole, but it's a jet. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, yeah. And it's sinking. Yeah. As, yeah. as we are speaking, it is sinking. So it used to be this big, now it's this big. Mm -hmm. So people coming from the other side, from the they avoid it by going into them. They fly down the road. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't yeah. want to. Yeah. Hey, thanks for listening. You have a question? Not that people necessarily. They drive on the wrong side of the road, basically coming right. down the hill. Yeah, and they're. Yeah. I've had a lot of those calls if I hadn't been pulling in my driveway. Mm -hmm. They come right down on the wrong side of the road 100%. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's dangerous. And, you know, I hate to have this problem being sued by me, amongst others, but I'm having a frontal exit. Yeah, we can get it. Yeah. Uh, it's an accident I'll way to be out. Yeah. yeah. Bike strip up there. <laughs> 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 I think we might have some construction ahead. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah. So I come on the 
and cars to go into the way. This is not fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, hard to fix stupid driving. But, um, Excuse me? But it's hard to fix stupid driving. Well, yeah, it's but it's very stupid. Well, if people are going out of their lane, yeah. So but I does. thank you for so bringing up, I mean, filling in the, a little more gravel so it's not so much of a dip, but people are still going to probably still swerve yeah. over, you so know, even though it's a blind so curve. That's I stupid. And there's yeah. nothing you can do about that. No, yeah. Until we get the work done and get that paved, you know, that's really the only way that's going to change that. I guess if we do have some caution signs, it wouldn't hurt to put something up, you know, the blind curve, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. I, I have a question, though. Yes. Is, is, is that your property, the curve? No, it's not my property. It, it's not? It's the, it's the town property. No. She's up the driveway. Yeah, I, I realize, but who owns the dirt that's in that curve? <laughs> the town. 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 Right? town right away. Town right away. Who does? Yeah, it's in the town right away. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, but you have to get out of the right away to remove that. No. You don't? Mm -hmm. Oh, that right. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just want you to be aware no, that there is a, appreciate it. Yeah. it's not a good spot. Thank you. No, and maybe somebody looking on Orca Media will say, boy, I'd do that on that road. Maybe I should mm, There's several spots on the other side where people have to also go yeah, off yeah. the complete wrong side yeah. of the road to avoid it. Everyone's used to that being a, a paved road, and then they get a little iffy when there's gravel. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you, Joe. What's oh, the best yep. case scenario for getting that, that covert work done up there? The culvert work on the, the upper, upper part? part? The upper part. Yeah. Had, uh, well, October 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 October. October. hopefully by October 11th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got that. There's some. Um, so that probably, I don't know, do you have anything else you want to talk about on the highway topic? Or it seems like we've talked about a lot of highway topic. I think we talked about, talked about a lot of highway Harlan. traffic. Harlan, yeah. Good. I've been meaning to tell you. Right about where my garden is, the upper part of my garden, there's a hole in the road that's probably this big around. And every time it rains, the water goes down. It's two feet in the road. And I keep, I, a couple times, I try to fill it up with rocks and shit. But it's not working. And it just, you know, it's going somewhere. <laughs> it's below my driveway, so I don't think it's a culvert. I mean, it's, I've never known of a culvert there. It's like, it's the, upper has been the, upper end of my, the upper end of my yard. If you come up, I'll show you. <laughs> you well, know? We're, we're headed in that direction. We'll be there in a month or so. We're going to have to do some investigating. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And um, Terry, um, anything updates on utilities that you want to? Well, talk about? we're gonna we're gonna have we got a test for PFAS, and I went to school last Friday on it, and it's quite quite detailed on how to take the sample and it's really mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we fail, it's not good at all. Right. And you. You're testing things to the 20 parts per trillion. <coughs> As the state guy says, if you, it's about a trillion miles to the moon, so if you go four inches, you fail towards the moon. So, I mean, it's really, you're testing for five different chemicals, and this. You can't, I mean, you don't, you can't wear a suit. You gotta have like cotton clothes that have to be washed at least six times to do it. No deodorant, no Gore-Tex shoes or anything. It's really a lot to it. What's the investment and in equipment necessary to do these there tests? There is no equipment. There is none. It's just sampling and sending. Right, and the only places it can go, there's two labs and Massachusetts, two labs in Florida, and two labs in California. So Endine can't handle it? 
No, but they're the ones I'm going through because they'll set them up and they're running shuttles every day, three days a week to Boston, to the place. So, and they'll set me up with the right kit to do it. Okay. And they'll help me out as much as they can. You even have to do a trip. They get, they send you a bottle here, an empty bottle with chemicals in it. And you dump it in here, and just going through the air, you could fail. So that's a pre, pre-test one. So if the pre-test fails, then they won't do the sampling on the other, and cost us like around six hundred dollars for a test. How often that is this test being done? Question. It depends on how much you test. If you test uh, under eighteen, we can go three years. If you test between eighteen and twenty every uh, quarterly and if it goes above 20, 20.5 20 is a failure, then you'd be told not to drink water at all. Where do you take your samples? they got to be taken at the well site with both pumps running and it's got to come back in. Have we ever had any trouble with anything like this? Yeah. We've never ever never. tested for this. Oh, okay. No, this is the test fact, the thing. legislature just Pass it on July 1, and you got to have it done by December 1. And there's no funding for it. Unlike lead and copper for the schools, they've got to test every faucet in the school mm -hmm. that kids can either wash their hands or they wash food. They said there's one, and each one has had two samples taken. And, and it's quite it. involved with that, but we do not have to do that. That's totally up to the school. Mm -hmm. But there's money for that. So Terry, you said this testing that we have to do for the town uh, has to be done by December 1st? Correct. Okay, thank every, you. Every town has to do it. And a lot of them are squawking because, you know, the ones I got to test like three times, that's going to hurt their budget. So. <laughs> So, when so you, I'm going to do it this next week. Yeah. I've got to take some samples, so I'm going to go down to stop and down and get because you only you got four days from the time you get pick the stuff up to do it and get it back. Where are you, you got to keep it within the six Celsius. Where are you getting the supplies? Right through end down. Okay. That's the only place you're going to get them. And be able to even have a chance. And this just that one one sample at the pump house. Yeah. Yep. There's two bottles. Yep. But they got to be put in individual bags and then put in other bags and then like the ice you can't use any of that blue ice or anything like that. It's got to be regular ice in a uh, freezer bag. And you get to wrap everything in it, <coughs> or else you'll probably fail. Hmm. It was pretty intense. It was, it was well worth going to the school for that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like even it. dare do it. You know. Yeah. No way. I mean, the state people were there. Everybody was there. Hmm. Have anybody completed this testing yet, or is there any other results There's, that you've heard? Uh, this is the same thing they tested down in Bennington. That the private was the private wells failed, mm -hmm. but the water system did not fail. And carbon filters will take it out. So I mean, that's one thing they found. But no, the only other place they've done it is where they did it before around IBM up in Burlington. Yeah, and that didn't fail, but. You know, we got, we got a cemetery right above our well, so I don't know what goes down that. You know, and we had no dump across the river. Any carbon there? So that, all that protocol you have to follow about, you know, not wearing certain things and stuff, is that because there's PFAS in it, those? Anything could fail, it, and even they said, you're not supposed to use shampoo or anything that morning. Because that could have P PFAS? Correct. Right. So failure does not mean your water service. No, that's why you do the sample. 
before, the one that's the modest blank, they call it. Right. You dump it in there, so if the blank fails, then they won't do the test. That means, and it could fail because of the air in the, in the pump house. So that stuff is that pervasive? Right. Wow, 20 parts per billion, up to, or trillion. Really? Yeah. That's a lot of zeros. Yeah. <laughs> and you're testing for five different chemicals. So it's a total of them. Uh -huh. All right. Stay tuned, huh? Thanks for studying. Yeah. But it's, I wouldn't even dare do it without. So I'm you're trying uh, to get some people coming around and doing them, but it's going to be quite pricey. Yeah. So your blank test that you do just to test the environment, then that has to go to that Massachusetts. That goes right along with all of them, and then yeah. they'll test that blank part first, and if that fails, then they won't do the other one. Oh, okay. So they both both samples go at the same time. Yeah. All right. So excuse me, Terry. You said you were going to start doing this next week. Am I correct? Yeah, it's only a one day thing. Okay. So you're doing it one day next week. Okay. So nobody exhale near the pump house. <laughs> yeah. We'll try not to. Yeah. Stay away from the pump house. Okay. All right. So hopefully we pass and yes, we won't have to worry about three years. better <laughs> warn. All right, um, going to, um, well, we've got one bid for roadside mowing, so let's open it and see what we got. And this is from Music Mountain <laughs> Property Maintenance in um, Stockbridge, and he's um, bid $14,950. And it's um, two machines, one with a six inch ditch bank mower, one with a five foot or a six foot ditch bank mower, uh, one with a five foot over the rail mower, 22 foot reach, mowing to be done as laid out by the town of Rochester. Um, one, two or three passes as requested and to be completed by September 27th. And, and he will uh, provide proof of insurance on being awarded the bid. So what did we budget for that? That's pretty close to what we budgeted for that, isn't it? Yeah, I think we yeah. I think it's a little longer. We got this contract once before, and it, yeah. I think it was f think less than that. I mean, quite a bit less than that. But uh, last year? No, I thought it was the Two years before. ago, I think it's around Two, that. A couple of years ago, I thought it was thirteen million. Was it thirteen? Yeah. yeah. Well, Fair. they got it in the budget. I, I guess I'd move to accept this bid. Mm -hmm. Get the I roads would, mowed. I would second that at this point. At least we don't have to mow um, Bethel Mountain Road. So <laughs> 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 Not much left to mow. <laughs> There's some roads that I took out that are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mow one pass. And, some and we have the list. Don't want their yard right. Mold. We have the no mow list. The no mow list. No mow list. Yeah. Yeah. Jam yeah. can yeah. and Harlan. Right. We gotta make sure he gets that list. Gets that list. Yeah. Right. If somebody doesn't want to be mowed, a no mow sign works the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On a piece of paper saying it. Yeah. <coughs> so I believe you seconded that. I did. All in favor? Aye. 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 I would think, like to make a comment. He did a very good job last year. The best job we've had for many years. A long time, yeah. And he got right on it. Yeah. It was worth it. Yeah. All right. That's good feedback. Thank you. All righty. Um, Jeffrey, you're next on the agenda here. Um, you wanted to make some noise about some noise. Hi, I'm, I'm Emma yeah. Peebus Peebus. So I'm Janice Melman. Yep. Hi, everybody. We live in the Schoolhouse. And we've just wanted to bring to your attention that um, we have some changes to our schedule. 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 We have some chang
fair amount of noise and they believe that it can go on until midnight. So from noon until midnight, we I wrote you a letter. We put in at least three uh, incidences where we haven't there been more than that. There's the folks out on the lawn. There's eight tables out there. Uh, we've gone over there to say, you know, it's gone on from 10 o'clock, 11:45, 2 a.m. We can't sleep. It's it's rather loud. And when we brought it to their attention, uh, they basically told us they have a piece of paper that says they can do anything they want until midnight, which doesn't seem fair or reasonable when we're also closed, especially in the summer and the windows are open. Uh, and, you know, there have been some other little things like dogs barking constantly and so forth, although uh, that may have uh, dissipated a little bit. For example, they have a cute dog over there with a rather barker. Uh, so we wanted to know if there was any kind of redress. Is there uh, a noise uh, level that people should be more cognizant of what their neighbors have to put up with after a period of time? Most places, that's 9 o'clock or so. And so we don't know, can they make any amount of noise until midnight or not? Okay. No, they, they can't make any amount of noise. They don't have license to make all the noise that they, they want to. Well, in fact, there's, um, I think it's um, 13 VSA 1022 is the state statute, which is the noise in the nighttime statute, which is what it's called. And um, um, basically, they're not allowed to be making any unnecessary or offensive noise after dark between from dark till dawn is basically where that um, rule applies, you know. And it's um, basically, it's, I, I think that it's, well, it's last meeting we had someone from the Huntington House here. Now we have you here. I think really what would be great is to, I, I, I understand you've gone and talked with them. Um, it would like, yeah, maybe it would be good if, if one of us could be with both of you and really, you know, have a, a, another conversation about this and try and work something out because it's, um, you know, they're, um, you want to sleep and, and they want to um, conduct a business and it's, they are responsible for um, people that are consuming alcohol on their property and they're, they're responsible for controlling them and, and not allowing um, offensive and disturbing things to happen. So it's, um, it's you. you know, well, they're, they're not correct in saying they can do whatever they want to midnight. No, that's not right. That's not what, yeah, <laughs> what yeah. you guys meant when you, yeah. you gave them that. Because uh, there was one incident, and because we are so close, we could hear it. It was around I don't know, 11 midnight, and there was, uh, I don't I'm obviously have no idea who was doing it, but there was a man shouting at a woman mm -hmm. in a very offensive way, and we were very worried about this woman's um, well-being. And so, and there was a couple of other instances where there's been fairly um, boisterous, kind of drunk uh, loudness. So we're just concerned also that if people are leaving and driving and they're a little out of control, obviously that can also be a worry for, for people in the town. So we just wanted to bring it to your attention and, and we would welcome going over there and speaking mm -hmm. uh, to them with some of you. That'd be great. This yeah. past Friday night, the uh, constables did a, a nighttime shift. Yeah, he did. And, and they were, they were in, in town and they were noted to watch if there was any noise or anything right. out of the ordinary going there. They did not note anything. It's too bad. The following night they had a band that plays along this midnight that was loud enough to be heard across the street. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, w I was there on Friday night and it was quiet and dead at 930. Market, more noise than the past. It's long oh, the yeah. bar. That's bad. We've never had this. Mm -hmm. never had this. The, the lights strung around the perimeter are on all night. Yep. The, signs are all falling down. The picnic tables look like plastic things that you would not even have in your own backyard. Um, it, it's just a nice quiet town and it's turning into something else. You're, you're not the only party to complain. I've heard this from a lot of people. Frankly, I'm, in, I'm embarrassed at what's happening over there. Thank you. And we do want them to be successful. We really do. We don't but this is a residential area yeah. and they're conducting a business that in my in my personal mind is not appropriately managed for a residential area and uh 
I think this is uh, an important topic to take on. I know if I was in New York, any, if I was living in the park and living in around this, in the center of town here, it would bother the heck out of me. So I understand what you're saying. And I, and I do feel that something needs to be done about it. I don't speak for the rest of the board. This is just me. I, I just have a question of uh, clarification. I wonder if you guys had occasion to uh, uh, notify any authorities. Have you made any calls in the evening? We have not, but we know other folks who are ready and willing and able to do so. I would encourage you to do so. Yeah. Right. Have authorities. To do. Right. Thanks for coming. Sorry that you couldn't make it last meeting to have you guys, but it'd probably be more productive if we had a uh, meeting not in front of a big crowd. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Um, Frank, welcome back. I haven't seen you for a couple of meetings. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not for not one meeting. Yeah, I know. I, I, yeah. <laughs> So you wanted to talk about um, lower Maple Hill infrastructure resiliency, or you're looking for an update on resiliency yeah, I on mean, that? Uh, I mean, you know, Galaxy far, far away. You know, mm -hmm. Maple Hill. Hill. I heard that two culverts were going to be installed, and um, and actually there, there's a there's really a traffic hazard on um, just just um, just above the uh, just above. Um, Greg and Gene White's. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's a. I, I assume that's going to be where one of the culverts is going to be replaced. But right now, there is an orange cone. But I'm just surprised. I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's there. But I, I, I'm kind of wondering if late at night somebody, you know, would, you know, get too close to it and go into it. I think that's a dangerous <coughs> situation. But when they're but coming. I, but I understood two culverts were going to be replaced. You know, up above, and I haven't heard more about it. And you know, Bureau of Civil Authority was there, and Tom was there, and Patty was there, and also Kevin Doherty, and um, they were looking at that. Um, they were looking at that column in front of Greg White's driveway, and wondering why there wasn't some outlet for water that was. I mean, Kevin was. He was wondering why. Um, I mean, I, in, in, a, in a letter I, I gave you, I was making a recommendation that the culvert would be parallel to the road rather than. You know, going um, at, at some kind of an angle to it. But, uh, so I, I just wanted to, I just wanted an update of what's going on with it. You got some coverage on the schedule? Well, we're waiting for it to go out. To the FEMA to people are meeting mm -hmm. tomorrow, and right. they'll be doing the site visit soon. So well, as you heard, tomorrow. as you yeah. heard from Joan, there's a there's a meeting with FEMA personnel yeah. tomorrow, yeah. and then following that, they will be doing the site visits. Those wheels are turning, right. slow, mm -hmm. but they're turning. As, as far as the cross culvert, I think whites. There has to be a cross culvert because right. if we put a driveway culvert you would be running way too much water down yeah. and down your neighbors below you they right. wash out every time it rain well i mean i mean I'm, I, I think the way that culvert is now that if there's a failure of culvert up above i'll have another wash out I mean, that's my concern. Mm -hmm. but, but again, I, I, I appreciate that Tom was there and Pat was there and <coughs> Kevin was there. Yeah. You know, yeah. those yeah, I understand that. But I'm just, I'm just bringing this back to the front of people's mm -hmm. you know, minds. The Board know. of Civil Authority was there because you were grieving the value of your land. Yeah, um, right. they, they weren't there to assess the culverts or anything like that. No, no, like but I'm saying it. Just so that it's clear. No, they, no, you know. I understand that. Okay. But I'm saying I was, I was pleased that that was coming up as a matter for discussion. Mm -hmm. but, and, but I, and it but still I is. Under, I also understood that FEMA, which, I mean, FEMA and VTRANS were at that intersection of Maple Hill and Wing Farm, and they're aware of the situation, at least in terms of inspecting that portion of Maple Hill. And they will be back yeah. to look at it yeah. again yeah. shortly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, but I, I, I guess I was following yeah. up on, I mean, specifically, what about those two columns that I understand were going to be um, yeah. know, placed and upgraded? 
And I'm calling attention also to what I think is a dangerous situation on that road. I, I mean, there need to be more, uh, I don't know, more uh, orange cones or more signs, something, so that somebody doesn't, I mean, end up, you know, you know overturning. Yeah. But, you mean somebody driving home from the Huntington House? Somebody driving, yeah. somebody driving up that road yeah. late at night, maybe in the weather in the yeah. apartment, and maybe that car would. Mm -hmm. I'm well su surprised that somebody hasn't fallen in there yet. I know what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yeah. 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 But, it's not a good situation, but you can do what you do. I've yeah. called the attention to it. You get two, two vehicles in that area. You right. to yeah. think it's a little Especially dicey, but it, you know, we can negotiate yeah. it. Yeah. But well, I really thought there was no need. So, so yeah. people, more people are taking Maple yeah. Hill instead of yeah. 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 Right. turn. Mm -hmm. Backwards, faster than they go forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand. So we'll just bring it back into yep. that forefront. Yeah. Okay. We, we write things up and then we find out, no, oh, that's not right. So we do it again and again and again. Right. And hopefully, I'm going to burn out on that. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the other. You want to talk some about the um, no, is, EWPP, I mean, or is that all part of it? But I mean, I, I mean, Joan had mentioned that. Oh, I think I don't know, maybe a month, six. I don't know. She had mentioned that as some as some way for you know property owners to get uh, some kind of um, uh, to, to be made to some degree whole for damage that had resulted from that April fifteenth storm. And I just it, I mean. Uh, Martha had, I mean, she had mentioned it in one of her uh, summaries of mm -hmm. the board meetings, and I'm, I'm wondering, um, I, I'm just bringing that back into you know, notice, too. But, I mean, assuming that that will be mentioned in you know, Martha's summary of the, and, and I'd like some more you know, details about it from Joan, maybe some refresher about that. I don't actually have an update because I handed it over to Pat. Pat, you went out. We went out, we did all the site visits, and we're waiting for their analysis of each one. For, for FEMA's analysis? No. No, that, no, was, that was the Federal Watershed it's, it's an Management Resources Conservation Service, yeah. yep. uh, Emergency Water, I forget what the initial stands for, EWP. Yeah, it's right there. Yep. Um, Patty, was I correct in when you were talking about the Lower Maple Hill? that the site visits are happening, they're coming from FEMA and VTRANS. They're the ones who are going to do the site visits soon. Yes, okay. FEMA, it's in the hands of FEMA. But no, I, don't know about FEMA I don't know about VTRANS, yes. but no, the, separate agencies the rest doing separate things. But not both at Lower Maple Hill. I misunderstand. Uh, not not v v FEMA. Okay, it's FEMA. FEMA okay. has um, some sites on Maple Hill Road, but it's not the, the EWPP program. That's okay. Sorry, program. I'm glad I asked. That one is only for, for the it's pro directed towards private property. Private property. Because FEMA and Federal Highway Administration and VTRANS do not do projects on private. Okay, private. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was a little confused. No, no, no. Sure, yeah. Oh, it's confusing. Yeah, yeah there's a lot is, of agencies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They all have their own ways of doing things. Yeah. No yeah. time frames. But, just, I, but I assume if if those are going to prove that, I mean, how will people be notified? They just have to they're going to they're they're sending all of their analysis back to us, yeah. the town, and we will as soon as we get it, we'll be getting in touch with every right. everyone that we visited. Yeah. What were there? Thirteen of them. There were right, properties. So we do. I had a contact. Information the guy that you went around with, I mm -hmm. could email Bill, him what his Bill Von Fossen. Okay. So stay tuned. Hopefully, it's we'll coming. have more information before the, the snow flies. Yeah. Slow. Um, <clears throat> speaking of wheels turning, um, I'd like to nominate Tim Crowley as the stagecoach representative for the town. I have no reason not to second that. Yeah, second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Tim, even though you're not here. <laughs> thank, thank you, Tim. You. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, yeah we can have yes. this. He, he mentions he's willing to yep. do it. About <laughs> his nomination and his appointment, yep. that they have to have a message from this office to the state show. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's why we were taking this formal step. Thank tonight. you. Yeah. 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 
Um, we had a um, someone wanted to discuss the, the drainage up on it Little Hollow Road across from um, South Hollow. Yeah, South Hollow Road. South Hollow. And, um, you know what we're talking about, right? Is there much to be done about that? It needs to be ditched. It needs to be ditched. Yep, it's getting in line, right? Another 45 miles a row. Yep, yep. yep. Um, but try it. Yep. This, is, this is somebody looking for ditching. They want to have the ditching? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yep. I guess. <coughs> yep. I know the road needs that. Yeah. It's, um, we rent the equipment, it's, you know, that. Bucket by bucket, right? Yeah. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think this driveway permit that you had, we had already approved. Um, oh. Oh, no, no, that's a different one. Okay. And Cooter, you had looked at this and you felt that um, this is the Oak um, Lodge. An Oak Lodge with the few conditions that you had on here. Yeah. Yeah. So I would. Um, Move to approve with the conditions, the attached conditions. I don't. I actually don't know what those conditions are. Um, it's a wider driveway called an 18-inch, mm -hmm. and they need to do some ditch. The, the town ditch at this point is not in shape to accept a wider culvert, so they need to do some ditch work on the town ditch to the next cross culvert so that the driveway culvert actually works. Got it. Got it. No expense to... Right, that. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So when we get to sign. This is a... Uh, And um, down at the bottom here, talking about the town trees. Martha, you're on the. Um, I'm on the park committee. You are on the park committee. Is this something that uh, you know about on the agenda? Uh, this is, no one's mentioned it to me, although no? I did have someone say to me after church the other day that they thought there were a couple of trees that needed to be either trimmed or taken down. And I asked them if they would show me specifically what they were talking about. And they said they would, but never called me. So I didn't. Yeah. Dick, you have some? Dick Scott. Yeah. Dylan, I talked to you about one of them, that little maple tree. Yep. It's more than half dead. And kids are climbing in there. Somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. That, and it, the, the trunk is all rotten. I would take it down for it. To get rid of it. Yeah. And then there's a uh, right across from the post office, there's an oak tree that's all dying. That one should come down. That one's more than half dead. Um, it was more than half dead. The little, little maple tree. Where are they going to climb after we take away those two trees? No. Uh, they're going to get hurt because all three of them are asking. I saw that the other night. I vote, I vote for company. learning. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, you have something? Well, a little tree or the I'm big 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 oh, Okay, wait a second. Let's finish with the trees first. Yeah. But I'm also on the town trees. All right. It's okay. the reason I'm on the, on the agenda, I yep. believe. Yeah. Okay. Now, we are in Windsor County, mm -hmm. Addison County, Rutland County, and Orange County has already got the emerald ash bore. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe, Dune, you were with us on a visit down on town property behind above the cemetery, I'll say behind the cemetery, maybe a few years ago when we were logging that hillside mm -hmm. and uh, selective cutting. And there's a bunch of ash trees that are very big and mature along the, behind the uh, tool shed all the way down to the French mausoleum. And those trees because there's, they're in a bunch, they will be attacked by the boar. 
eventually. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't think anybody is immune. Uh, there's a lot, other, a lot of other ash trees owned by the town on the town road, along the town road. They will become a hazard. Uh, as you know, it's three to five years to be dead, and they won't come down all in one piece. Mm -hmm. They will be broken off as they, as they uh, die, and, but it's a fast death. And Norm Smith is our tree warden, and he would have the connections to go to the state uh, uh, forestry department uh, to see recommendations about some of the uh, big and, and uh, dangerous ash trees along the town road. Now remember, we have limbs coming down off dead trees all the time, don't we, Tudor? And so, however, this is going to be more of that where there is ash trees, and they are a lot of them along the town road. But down behind the cemetery, and I'm speaking alone now, I'm not as a cemetery commission, because it is a, a, uh, uh, a town land mm -hmm. and so forth. But they should be considered either treating them, and apparently there is a treatment mm -hmm. to protect them for every two years, they gotta be treated. But those trees there are already over mature, and they probably have some value uh, uh, to the ash uh, people, as mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a dying uh, business now, and it will we'll continue. Since 2003, I believe, that they attacked us to begin with. But anyway, Windsor County hasn't got it yet. However, we're in this, this little yeah, point around Windsor County yeah. that we will have it maybe before the rest of Windsor County has it. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire had it two years ago. New York had it three years ago. And we just got it about a year ago. And, but it's moving two to three miles a year. And uh, it depends upon the weather. And they don't move after October. And then they'll start moving again in June. Mm -hmm. And so forth. That's the historical. Now remember, I am no expert on the Emerald Ash Bar. However, there's a lot of people that are, and Laura Smith would know where to go to uh, for, for advice as to what we as Rochester should do with our uh, mature ash tree. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. No. Yeah. Um, anybody else have anything else I want to say on that? Yeah, Dick said he was willing to take down that, um, that, that, that small tree. Yes, yes. I was wondering whether he was willing to take down the other tree that was a problem too. The oak tree? No. Too big. Too big. Too big. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay, All right, yeah. <laughs> so am I correct, Dick, you said you were, were, were willing to remove a particular maple tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good talk. Um, that leaves us down to so we've got Marvy, Frank, um, the only other old businesses still on hanging out there, the missing book, which I've got no updates for you on that. No updates. No updates. Has anybody looked since the last time? I haven't. Oh. Has anybody been in there searching for that that you know of? Uh, Tony Delorier. Tony Delorier come in. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. But, no, that's about the update. Yeah, someone did come in looking for it. Mason's but lawyer. Well, I don't know if she's still your lawyer or not. Not, yeah. not, not for the town. Uh, no. Okay. So that's probably, what, five weeks that nobody's looked? Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Kind of exhausting. We looked in the closet. closet. Hmm? We looked in the closet. Mm -hmm. yep. There's only so many places yeah, you can look. Yeah. I, I <laughs> looked, uh, a lot of people looked a lot of places, but yeah. it's not, um, no, it has not shown up. I mean, in the room downstairs, are people attacking that? Or? Yeah. Uh, Bruce? Bruce has it. spent some time yeah. down in there. Yeah. That's it for now. That's the update. Okay. okay.
Uh, does anybody else have anything else they'd like to speak about before we um, call tonight? Thank you all for coming, and um, happy summer.